You know, at Freelancers Union, I think it's so important to have anchoring institutions that really have the ability to have stability, that have an ability to look three and five years down into the future and start to build those very networks with other kinds of organizations. In that beautiful ride and, and run, there's a lot of chaos. And so you want to have chaos, you want to have stability, you want to have anchors, you want it kind of all happening together. And so what I hope that I'll be able to do, and what I hope for the Freelancers Union, is that we really help to sh shepherd that and to be part of the pieces that were chaotic and the pieces that were interesting, but also the pieces that were stable, all toward moving in a direction that really does transform society. I think we all share a hope for how we're going to, I don't want to just say like make the world better, but I actually think we share some insights and intuitions about what the next strategies are going to be. They don't necessarily converge, they don't necessarily agree, but I think there's a shared intuition here. Well, first of all, I think that these changes are really about building something new, and I think the politics will come from that. And I think right now there's often a pressure to say, what's the policy agenda? What should the elected officials today do? But I think that there's not that much they can do because they're really about the old manufacturing economy and the old the economy in general. And so I often try to just say, well, what would the future be? And what would that agenda look like? And how would we get there? And then have the leaders who then can help move that forward. We all want to collaborate. If you walk down the street and somebody said, I absolutely want to collaborate with nobody, you wouldn't think that that person had good energy. But the truth is that really good collaboration comes from people having a very strong idea about what it is they want to do and finding the partners and the networks and the ways to interconnect that actually get something done. And I think that's why intuition starts to be very important because intuition starts us off. That gives us a good gut check on what needs to get done. And after that, you start having really stronger, rational, strategic objectives. And then you start finding your partners. And then you start building your networks. And then, strangely, I think serendipity happens, right? Because it's within an infrastructure and within boundaries and other things. But it lets you really move in a direction that you need to go in. You know, in some ways I think the first thing is the change has to be in us. We really are facing such a huge change in work away from the 40-hour traditional work week and really moving into just a very different form of, of life where work isn't necessarily going to be the predominant thing. Or we're going to be doing lots of little gigs and sometimes not being very busy and sometimes being insanely busy. And so I think that we are going to have to see like where, where does this get us, but ultimately how do we make it so that people can enjoy and love one another, their families, the things they believe in, the things that they want to do. And I think that's going to be really important. And I would say if I have a fear, the fear is that we have a naivete about us right now that doesn't see concentrated power where it is. And in some ways, I worry that we've internalized Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher to think that we're hyper-individualized and we're going to create platforms of hyper-individualized actors holding hands. And I don't believe that. I think we need to form more sophisticated groups that can really, really have power to help move things in the direction that they need to go into. I think the biggest building block for me is solidarity. Because solidarity has two components. The first one is spiritual. It's a belief in something greater than yourself. But the second is economic, and it's the realization that we're economically interconnected. 
And I think that we need to dust up that word, you know, it's been in the old fashioned department and bring it back because what that does is it lets us look about at the earth and climate and all these changes and the things that we eat and see things at a much larger level and how we're connected to all of that. And so I think that's the thing that has to change. And then if I had like a specific thing that I think needs to change, capital flows. I think that when you look at the people who are really trying to transform the world, if they don't have a business model that will scale, they don't get investor money. And I think that there's plenty of things that have perfectly good margins where revenues exceed uh, their expenses, whether it's cooperatives or unions or other kinds of things. And if I were an elected official, I would try to scale those like crazy. And I think a great example is what President Roosevelt did in America in the 1930s, where he said, I want to transform the economy, but I know it can't come from government. It's got to come from unions. So I'm going to let unions exist and be free, and I'm going to help figure out their business model so they can do it on their own. And I think we need those new kinds of inst institutions and organizations and groups and networks, but they have to have their money and there has to be capital flows to them and they have to be independent.